the 2022 federal election was a couple months ago. It's interesting, it's hard to ignore in the lead up to the election, there were regular, almost weekly protests against uh, the mandatory vaccinations and COVID lockdowns, particularly in Melbourne and across Australia, including also a prominent one in Canberra. I was interested to see whether this civil unrest translated to any results at in the at the electoral level. In terms of actual results, only one Senate seat went to a freedom friendly party, that's United Australia Party, Pauline Hansen's One Nation or Liberal Democratic Party. The rest um, of lower house seats were unsuccessful, so it's quite a difficult challenge in that um, they, any candidate from one of these parties would have required a majority of 50% votes on a two-party preferred basis. So the data from the election was released by the AEC, and I looked at the data at the polling place level. There were, there were almost 8,500 of these places, including their geographic coordinates. For votes at polling places with these coordinates, there were almost 12.9 million or over 12.9 million. Here I've got a histogram of the votes at the polling place level. Um, there's an average of 10.3% of first preference votes going to UAP, PH, ON, or LDP, FON. Top 10 polling places by support for the FM, FFMPs are shown below. Glendon polling place in Queensland in the, elect- in the electorate of Capricornia, Capricornia had the greatest level of support at 41%, with a total of only 78 votes. There's a good representation of Queensland and New South Wales in this top 10 with only Perth Airport brand PPVC from Western Australia. So the PPVC were pre-poll voting centres, so votes uh, mailed in prior to the date of the election. Got a section here on the disappointment that is Melbourne just because the support for these freedom-friendly parties wasn't that high. Colour-coded the percentage support in these bands 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10, 15, etc. Dark orange shading indicates greater level of support and note the de-emphasized white light circles in inner city Melbourne and the size of the markers are scaled according to quantiles of total votes. So that's there where there's a, a, a scarcity, paucity of support for the freedom friendlies. So in Melbourne, most of the support was in the outer fringes, predominantly in the southeast of Melbourne in Dandenong, Pakenham. There was 21% support in the pre-polling voting centre in Dandenong, and there's some support in the north near South Morang and Thomastown around here, and then in the west near Sunshine and, Ho- Sunshine and Hoppers Crossing around here, both had 18% levels of support. I've got a version of this uh, page on the website. If you want to use it interactively, um, you can. And here we can drill down and see that um, there's support in the northwest of Victoria at Swan Hill. And the other main one was in Taralgon, Moe and Morwell. So if you're interested in specific polling places, you can click on that link and have a look around. Okay, so signs of resistance in Sydney and pushback in New South Wales, so there's that concentration of support to the west of Sydney and um, in regional areas you've got 
FFMP support hovered around 18% in Wollongong and was high as 17% at Singleton South polling place and as high as 28% at Seaham, a town adjacent to Maitland on the outskirts of the broader New South Wales Newcastle population cluster. Main resistance was in the division electorate of Werriwa in Western Sydney. Support ranged between 23 and 27% for the top 10 polling places in Werriwa, which is very impressive. Um, then overall support for the Freedom Friendlies was stronger in New South Wales than Victoria. Additional support all along the coast here from Tari, Port Macquarie, Coffs Harbour, up to Grafton. Here, just noted that Lismore was breaking the trend. It was somewhat atypical. There's not much support for the Freedom Friendly Parties. And then crossing that border to Gold Coast, then the support returns and is actually appears to be the most, um, appears to be a stronghold, most concentrated area of support for the Freedom Friendly Parties is in Queensland, around Brisbane, the, the state from which Pauline Hanson's party originates, as well as UAP, if I'm not mistaken. So once again, there's a you know lack of support in the inner city of Brisbane, but around that city centre, there's support to the south in the Gold Coast, to the west, towards Toowoomba, and then to the north, um, the Sunshine Coast there. So Queensland doing very well. And similarly, there is good support for the Freedom Friendly Parties in the Northern Territory in Darwin. These are the top ranked polling places by support for the Freedom Friendly Parties, 30% in Tyndall. And at 10th place, Humpty Doo, 23%. The rest of Australia I've called a barren wasteland. There wasn't much support for the Freedom Friendly Parties. I suspect it's due to the fact that the states and areas uh, got through the last couple of years relatively unscathed in terms of, um, dare I say it, interference from their governments in, in, in terms of, you know, control, um, lockdowns and restrictions. I know the borders were shut, but apart from that, uh, case numbers were very low and they were largely unaffected until fairly recently, late 2021. So, um, yeah, those, those areas were not sympathetic to the causes of the freedom friendly parties. There's some minor support in the Northern suburbs of Adelaide. I've speculated there there appears to be some relationship between the warmer weather and support for the freedom friendly parties, but it's a little bit unclear why that geographic pattern emerges. Quick summary of the results uh, in, in the areas with the most support for UAP, FON or LDP, support range between 33 and 41% for the top 10 ranked polling places, although votes were less than 500. Areas where there, were, there was support included South East Queensland, Western Sydney near Liverpool, along the New South Wales coast, from Port Macquarie, Coffs Harbour up to Grafton, as well as many regional towns in New South Wales, the outer western, northern and southern eastern suburbs of Melbourne, as well as the Traralgon surrounds, and to a lesser extent, the northern suburbs of Adelaide. So larger polling booths um, had support in the 20s in Queensland, but it looks like the major parties likely preferenced each other, meaning that these minor parties were unable to be successful overall after the preferencing of votes was considered. In the next piece of analysis, I look at whether these votes at the federal election or how they translate to the Victorian electoral um, 
divisions and, and their, those geographic definitions uh, to inform what is likely to occur at the Victorian state election, which is due in November. So that one's kind of interesting too. Um, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.